Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the top 10 facts about Shapur the First the Great. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Shapur the First was the second king of kings of the Sasanian Empire in Iran. His reign is contested but it is widely accepted that he reigned from 240 to 270, with his father Ardashir I serving as co-regent, until the latter's death in 242 during his co-regency, he assisted his father in the capture and devastation of the Arab city of Hatra, whose collapse was aided by the actions of his future wife Al-Nadira, according to Islamic tradition. Here are 10 things you should know about him. Number 10. Shapur took advantage of the Roman Empire's military instability by launching a second expedition against it in 252-256, sacking the cities of Antioch and Dura Europos. In 260 he killed and captured Valerian the Roman Emperor during his third campaign. He did not seem to be interested in permanently occupying the Roman provinces, preferring instead to loot and pillage in order to amass large sums of money. Antioch's prisoners for example were sent to the recently rebuilt city of Gundashapur, which later became known as a center of scholarship. Shapur faced Odinathus the king of Palmyra in the 260s and suffered defeats. Shapur remained present at the court in his later years, according to his inscription at Hajiabad where he participated in archery. He died in Bishapur most likely in May 270 from sickness. Number 9. Shapur was the first Iranian monarch to address himself as King of Kings of Iranians, and non-Iranians replacing the previous royal title of King of Kings of Iranians. Because of the invasion of Roman people he removed during his campaigns he was given the title. However it was under his son and successor Hormuzd I, that the title was formalized for the first time. Shapur built new Zoroastrian fire temples introduced new elements from Greek and Indian sources into the religion, and embarked on a massive program of city reconstruction and refounding. Number 8. Shapur took part in his father's war against the Arsacids, including the Battle of Hormozgen as depicted in Sasanian rock reliefs. Artabanus IV was defeated and killed in the battle on April 28, 224 signaling, the culmination of the Arsacid period and the beginning of 427 years of Sasanian rule. After Dad Windad, the deceased Arsacid king's chief after secretary, was later assassinated by Ardashir I. Ardashir had two rock reliefs carved in his honor at the Sasanian royal city of Ardashir Quara modern-day Firuzabad in Pars to commemorate his triumph. The first relief depicts three scenes of personal combat, beginning on the left with a Persian aristocrat capturing a Parthian soldier, followed by Shapur impaling the Parthian minister Dad Windad with his lance and Ardashir I defeating Artabanus IV. The second relief ostensibly depicting the battle's aftermath, shows Ardashir I receiving the badge of kingship over a fire shrine from the Zoroastrian supreme god, Ahura Mazda, while Shapur and two other princes look on from behind. Shapur was considered by Ardashir to be the gentlest, wisest, bravest, and ablest of all his brothers and he was elected as his successor in a council of magnates. The fledgling Sasanian Empire's eastern provinces bordered on the Kushan, and Sakhalans roughly modern-day Turkmenistan, Afghanistan and Pakistan. The local Kushan and Saka kings had offered homage, as a result of Shapur's father Ardashir I's military operations, and Ardashir seems to have refrained from conquering their lands, pleased by this display of obedience. Tabari claims to have restored the ancient city of Zarang in Sakastan, the territory of the Sakas, Sistan, but the only early Sasanian era foundation of a new settlement in the east of which, we are certain is Shapur I's construction of Nishapur, which is a beautiful city built by Shapur in Dehistan, former Parthia, apparently lost by the Parthians to the Kushans. Number 7. Ardashir I had resumed the war against the Roman Empire near the end of his rule, and Shapur I had captured the Mesopotamian fortresses of Nisibis and Karai, and marched into Syria in 242. The Romans led by Gordian III's father-in-law, marched out against the Sasanians with a large army, and great quantity of gold according to a Sasanian rock relief and wintered in Antioch, while Shapur was preoccupied with conquering Gilan, Khorasan and Sistan. Timesithius a Roman soldier fought against the Sasanians, and won several battles recapturing Karai and Nisibis, and finally routing a Sasanian force at Risona causing, the Persians to return all conquered cities to their inhabitants unharmed. The young emperor Gordian III who had accompanied his father-in-law Timesithius, exulted in writing to the Senate we have reached, as far as Nisibis and shall even get to Ctesiphon. 
Later the Romans conquered eastern Mesopotamia, but were met with fierce opposition from Shapur the first who had returned from the east. Timesithius died in mysterious circumstances and Philip the Arab succeeded him. Gordian III the young Roman emperor went to the Battle of Misish, and was either killed in battle or executed by the Romans after the defeat. After that the Romans elected Philip the Arab to be their emperor, Philip didn't want to make the same mistakes as past claimants, and he knew he needed to return to Rome to protect his senate spot. In 244, Philip signed a peace treaty with Shapur I agreeing that Armenia would be included in Persia's sphere of control. He also had to pay the Persians a massive indemnity of 500,000 gold denarii. Philip distributed coins right away proclaiming that he had reached an agreement with the Persians' Pax Fundator come Persis. Philip on the other hand eventually broke the treaty and took back territories that had been lost. Number 6. Shapur is mentioned several times in the Talmud, where he is referred to as Shabur Malka in Jewish Aramaic. He was friendly with the Jewish community and a friend of Shmuel, one of the most prominent if the Babylonian Amoraim, the Talmudic sages from Mesopotamia's major Jewish communities. By deporting many Romans from captured cities to Sasanian provinces such as Kutenstan, Assuristan and Pars, Shapur's campaigns robbed the Roman Empire of wealth, while rebuilding and greatly enriching his own treasury. Iran's domestic commerce was revitalized, as a result of the influx of deported artisans and professional professionals. Shapur succumbed to illness in Bishapur. Hormiz I, his son succeeded him after his death in May 270. Two of his other sons, Bahram I and Narsay would go on to become kings of the Sasanian Empire, and another son Shapur Mishansha who died before Shapur, sired children who would go on to hold high positions in the empire. Number 5. On Shapur's inscription at Nakish e Rustam, some names of Shapur's officials are carved. Many of them were the children of the officials who worked for Shapur's boss. During Shapur's reign, a certain Papak was the commander of the royal guard, Hazabd, while Peroz was the chief of the cavalry, Asbed, Vahanam, and Shapur were the directors of the clergy, Kurdasro was the viceroy of the empire, Bidaksh, Vardbad was the chief of services. Hormizd was the chief scribe Naduk was the gatekeeper chief of the prison, and Papak was the gatekeeper. Number 4. Ardashir's titulage was king of kings of Iranians, but Shapur I altered it slightly by adding the word and non-Iranians. The expanded title reflects the empire's expansion, although it's unclear exactly what was considered non-Iranian, an Iran, at the time. Despite the fact that he used this new title on his inscriptions, it was almost never used on his coinage. Under Hormiz the first the title was first regularized. Number 3. Shapur Stars is one of Marcus Clodius Ballista's rivals in Harry Sidebottom's historical fiction novel series. Marcus Clodius Ballista is a career soldier in a 3rd century Roman army. The theological phenomena shown by Shapur indicates that the Zoroastrian priesthood started to increase during his rule, as shown by the mobbed Kartirwo states in an inscription that he used Shapur's conquests to spread Zoroastrianism. Despite the fact that Kartir was part of the Shapur court, the clergy's power was reduced and it only began to grow during the reign of Bahram I. Number 2. Shapur proves to be a particularly egalitarian monarch, providing the greatest welcome for adherents of all faiths in his kingdom, despite the fact that he was never subjected to the clergy's influence. According to Jewish sources, he was a generous king who granted audiences to the community's representatives. Later Greek accounts describe Shapur's conquest of Syria, in which he destroyed all but the city's most important religious sanctuaries. He also granted religious freedom to his empire's Christians, allowing them to establish churches without seeking permission from the Sasanian court. Number 1. Manichaeism a new religion established by the Iranian prophet Mani, grew in popularity during Shapur's rule. Shapur treated Mani well and in 242 the prophet entered the Sasanian council, where he attempted to convert Shapur by dedicating the Shaburagan, his only work written in Middle Persian. Shapur on the other hand refused to convert to Manichaeism and remained as Zoroastrians. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.